It's not time, is it? Oh yeah, let's go, baby. What? Hey, I got 15 seconds before noon, don't I? Woo! Guess who's back, baby? Ow! All right. Wow, I needed that nap. Hey, Spocky and Peyton and Napa too. All right, everybody, welcome to Festool Live. Yes, we're live this week. It's 12 noon. Happy Festool Friday. Man, did I miss this team. Woo! All right, I got a wicked special edition for you today. I'm going to announce the room really quick so we can get cranking. All right, over here we got the big D in town today. Hey. Behind the camera, we got Krista Unit Seibert. Online answering your questions is Garrett Fumio Sato. He's the man. We have Minnie right here. Min Min, say hi. Hi. Okay. And we're going to get started because this is a wicked special edition. Big D, tell me everything's good. Okay, good. Woo! No hiccups today. Because I want to call out everybody out there in the armed services. Whether you're serving today or you served previously, happy Veterans Day. Festool North America wants to thank you for your service. We appreciate it. I know it's Remembrance Day around the world. I know we have a global audience. So thank you, all you veterans. You know what I wish? I wish we had a veteran here. Well, you were in luck. Woo, baby, look who it is. Because here I am. Wow. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking. That is me. And what's wicked cool is he will be with us for the next two months. Because Jason is retiring from the Army. How long, you, how long have you done service in the? 20 years. Wow, they didn't kick you out. No, surprisingly. Holy moly. Hard, hard to believe, I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, I tried many times. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, we could still kick him out. Okay, we're gonna try. All right, everybody, I just wanna announce this. Jason is here for, like I said, two months. He, uh, you have an internship in the Army? Correct, internship program is part of retirement. Wow, retirement. I did that 15 years ago. And he is known as our ambassador <laughs> while the he's here. Terminology. You're going to see a lot of great stuff on YouTube and Instagram, and we're going to be working with Jason here. He's actually helping us a lot during his term here, so we're really excited to have him working here. I just met him, and <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so check this out. Did you see where I was sitting? It is wicked comfortable. This is the Adirondack chair that Brent built on the new build series. So go check it out on YouTube. It's cranking right now. Also, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube. That's where Festool Live is. That's where we post Festool Shop Talk and all the other cool inside Festool. Uh, we're doing some really cool one-on-one -on -one, uh, inside uh, Festool stuff. Um, okay, so this is the Adirondack chair. Check it out. Hang on a second. Ambassador, can you please move that for me? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. You got it. Excuse me. <laughs> this is going to be a fun two months. <laughs> All right. Okay. One more announcement. And this is so daggone cool. Next week, where are we going to be, kids? Hatfield Hardware. Hatfield Hardware and Lumber. Big D's going to be there. Chris, the unit's going to be there. I'm going to be there. But guess who's coming to lug all our stuff? Our Presence. ambassador. No. I, guys, I please there. come out and see us. It's a fe Hey, be on Fest Tool Live. It's November 18th from Hotville Hardware in Hotville, Ohio. I know Craig and Tyler, you told me you were going to be there, so be there or be square. Also, we'll be working the Fest Tool area the rest of the day. Uh, we'll be there in the morning. We'll be in the afternoon. We got Travis who's going to be there. Jamie who's going to be there demoing. We'll be there to demo as well. It is one of the best shows that I have been involved with for many, many years. I love doing this show. But also, uh, we're going to be doing another stage presentation. It won't be streamed or anything, but that'll be also November 19th at noon. So we'll be hanging out uh, Saturday as well. And I think it runs till about 7 at night on Friday night. So that'll be a, a, a late beer o'clock. Okay, so. <laughs> he likes that. It's going to be a long day. It'll be a long day. Okay, and not that I don't drink. Okay, I got to say one more shout out to all my new friends in Ireland. 
Um, I just got back. I had a, about a two-week vacation there. I needed it. Uh, I needed to get re-energized. I think it worked. And someone came, I came back and someone said, give me two words that describe Ireland. Guinness and sheep. <laughs> Guys, you have the most amazing, beautiful country. It rained the entire time. But the number one thing are the people of Ireland. Oh my God, you are so wonderful to chit chat with and throw down a couple Guinnesses with and hang out with my wife and my, my uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law. We had a wonderful time. I just have to shout out Ireland because you guys rock. And we have a lot of people in Ireland that watch Festool Live. Okay, boy, can that sedge chat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> boy, can he talk. I've never heard that before. Chatty Kathy. okay. Minnie, how we doing? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is episode 117. I'm blown away. <laughs> Every time I tell everybody the number, we really enjoy doing this. I couldn't wait to get back. Okay, what is it? We labeled it the Festool Winter Launch Extravaganza. Look at Chris is nodding. He likes that, okay? Bear with me because I like to take some of the things sometimes that people don't fully comprehend. We release a new product. You may look at it, say, in the catalog. That's why I lo love Lost in the Catalog. Uh, right, man? Yeah. Uh, people came up to me at the Indie Festival Experience that said, we love Lost in the Catalog. That's our favorite. I don't want this to get lost because this is a limited edition. Uh, we have two things. And I almost wanted to label this episode, you asked for it. We got it. Here it is. So there's two things uh, that we're launching this in North America this fall slash winter that I'm going to cover. Okay. And I have an assistant. Okay. Good. <laughs> right, Ambassador? Yes. Would you like some more coffee? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. that's the last thing. Hey, can somebody get me a Red Bull? Yeah. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Chris, come over here and pan so we can get this. Hey, we released this, I think, last spring. It was our clamping set. Number one question we knew when we saw it the fall of 2021 is that everybody's going to go, can I get the lever clamp separate? Guess what? We listened to you, and we got them. These are the lever clamps. Okay, now, I had to be corrected several times because I actually called these hold fasts. And what's a hold fast? It sounds like something you use the hand tools. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Correct. This is uh, a kind of an updated uh, hold fast. I use this in my bench at home. I have a European workbench where you slide it through a dog hole. And a traditional one, you just knock it down like this and it holds. And to knock it away, you go like this. But this one's a little bit different. It gives you a little extra pressure. It holds a piece down to the work table. I have another one here. Thank you, Ambassador. <laughs> okay. But this is uh, used with a, and I have a shorter version of this for an MFT, but I just grabbed this off my bench at home. And this works as a hold fast as well. Okay, but there's a difference. Those are kind of like two-handed. What I really like about this lever clamp, and you gotta, you gotta understand that these posts are uh, very uh, tightly turned or machined to 20 millimeter. So just when you start using these, and when I say one-handed, my tool could be running, I could push it down like this and lock it in, and it secures the piece. And you can do it on all materials in the non marring When I pick it up, I pick it up from the back here. Because it actually acts as a lever, there's a little bit of play in there that locks it in. Okay, on here, look, I'll use it on this wall nut. And just, okay, and there you go. It's a very tight tolerance. Bring it down. In other words, I can maneuver things in and out with one hand or clamp with one hand. Where we have these, which are fantastic, our traditional uh, F-style clamps. This is a ratcheting one where you use it like this. You bring it in and use it like this. But you have seen me in previous Festool Lives where I ha whoopsie. Whoa, getting a little cranky there, Sedge. See how easy that is? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little crowded. <laughs> a little crowded, so I could take it like this. And from underneath, I can use it as a low profile because it's lower than the height of the FS rail. 
Okay, kind of using it like a hold fast. I used to show people and call it a hold fast. I was really excited and where I have been using these, whether here or at home, is I like to use it when I'm using my LR32 system because this profile, I can lock it even off halfway here. And when I'm doing the back version of this, it doesn't get in the way. It's just a quick way to clamp things down and it works fantastic. Do you have anything to ask, uh, or ask or add, Ambassador? No, I, I think I think you covered all of it. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, pretty good I, job. I must be doing my job correctly. Thank you, Ambassador. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get to the next one. Uh, I want to cover something because sometimes I see stuff coming down the, the line, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that that looks okay. So I think it was. Was it last year? I think it was last fall or last year, Big D, we released these uh, hand tool sets, okay? And we released them in metric and imperial. Now, I'm gonna ask you guys out there, did you get both or did you just get one? Which one did you get, imperial or metric? I got metric for my house, okay? I just like the fit and feel of it and it was all the different screwdrivers, right? But underneath you had a hex key set. You had these wrenches, they're kind of like, they were geared on one end. And I can't tell you how many times I reach for this. This, this is in my sis wall at home. You have an adjustable wrench and the wrench I really like because it's embossed with the world's greatest power tool company on there. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Ambassador, you got to realize you got to get the shtick going, brother. It has, it has really good dust collection. Oh, and you know what I... <laughs> hey, I think he's going to work out. <laughs> okay. Have you ever done... Best on the market. Have you ever done YouTube videos before? Uh, a couple times. A couple times? Yeah, okay. cat videos. Okay. <laughs> okay, we also have... This is the metric version. Same screwdrivers, but the hex key set. They're ball jointed. Fantastic, it goes from 19 millimeter down to eight millimeter on the gear wrench, it's wonderful. Okay, so there you go. I'm just gonna stack these together. Oh, here. Oh, what's that? Here, okay, so last, you. was it this spring? I think this spring we came out with the, look, I was like, you know, I love these. I could use ratcheting stuff. So we came out with this. Yes, I got a set for the house. Yes, do I have several brands of sockets at home? Yes. Okay, but I really like this little piece. I didn't get it for this. I have another, I have two of these. I use these for installs all the time to get into tight quarters. Okay, for adjustments or some hardware that was tough. You put a, a bit in here like this. You got posi drives. You can adjust hinges with this. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the whole kit. I already have, but what was wicked cool about it, it was in metric and imperial and we had quarter and half inch, okay? And we had ratchets and all of it. And look, when I have this at home, okay, I am eliminating a lot of space, aren't I, in my shop? Because I have all my hand tools right there. But there was something after we released this, you guys were out there asking, I wonder if you guys are gonna come out with more. If it, only you had pliers. <gasps> pliers? Wait, there's more. So we, we listen to you. Tools. And this is what's new for the fall. And when we open this up, look, everything is right there. It's a nice compact form, right? So I'm going to open it up, and there it is. And that concludes Fest Tool Live. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to break this aside. Big D, I got you. you got me right there, right? Yep. I'm gonna call him out and then I'm gonna break him out. Oh, there we go, hang on. Sorry. Do that again. He, he Make just, sure you get that, he, that's Vanna. I mean, he ambassador. Wanted, he wanted me to do that. That's my ambassador, okay, okay. So, I'm just gonna call him out really quick. All the blue here, all right, they're all uh, regular. And right here, the reds, of course, to call it out, they're all rated for 1,000 watt uh, insulated. I'm gonna cover each one now. I'm trying to think of where I wanna end this. There's one in here that I, they're all fantastic as I've been messing with these. But there's one, oh my God, I just absolutely love. Okay, so let's start with this. This is your typical lineman's playa. Okay, Big D, make sure you get in here. It's got a, it's got a cutter right here. I have lineman's playas at home. 
um, that I think that my go-to ply is when I'm working in electrical boxes. Unless I get a, uh, I need a needle nose to get in there. Tight space. Tight space, right. Um, if we can call it out, Big D, there's actually a space right here for twist and wire. It's diagonal. What I got a kick out of, because I was talking to Rick about it, is it's really neat. Those are my diagonal cutters underneath. But if, if you check this out, is this coming in, Big D? Yep. Okay, there's actually little teeth in here that you can actually lock onto a bolt. And man, with these really thick, feel those, man. They're a little bit thicker uh, than your traditional. They're really, I guess we call, we'll call it a comfort grip. Um, if you'll notice right here, there's little places to hook a lanyard, like a, like a little um, key uh, hoop to put on a lanyard. So a lot of electricians will hook something here and have it right here. What I like to do is I'll just take my tape out of my pouch and I put my stuff in here when I'm working electrical. Right, yeah. um, stuff like that. When I'm up on a ladder, I don't need a tape, but I have my pouch with me. Right here, some needle noses. Big D, make sure you zoom right in here. What I like about these, okay, is they are embossed with the world's best power tool company. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm never doing gets, this. I'm doing this. Old. Uh, I never gets old, and I do. <laughs> I do this because I'm training the ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. I always want to make sure I point that out on every tool. Always. Uh, oh, <laughs> World's best power tool company. I did it yesterday. We were training on the Domino and I showed them on the Dominoes that it yeah. said Vestal. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, way better wood. I did it about 10 times. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Once again, <clears throat> place to hook your lanyard. They're rather long. When I look at, Big D, make sure you get this. When I look at a needle nose, I make sure I look at the tip to see that it meets up. I've seen stuff right off the shelf sometimes where there's actually a space at the end. That's where you want that bite to get in there when you're trying to pick something out or look, get something to turn for you. Also, a diagonal cutter on there, and you have that one area here. These are really fine threads at the very tip, but you have that area right here to turn a bolt. Okay, right above the diagonals. So those are needle nose. Okay, next. These are nippers. Nippers. That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, depending on where you're from in the United what States. What do you use nippers for? Can I have my nipper board? Please? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to grab this. I want you to zoom in on that. I'm going to grab what I, I brought from home. These are old. I don't even think they're named. My dad gave these to me. They're antique. Okay. Nope. They're not even embossed with any name. Okay. So uh, I, had I have two sets of nippers at home. And where I use nippers, I use them as pullers. Um, but what happens over time, if we can get in here, Big D, I'm going to try to point this out. These start to degrade, so I have to take a file to get the little nicks out as I'm pulling these little nails out. I use them for pulling nails. Say I'm doing base molding or crown, and these kind of live in my pouch. Where I grab these, and the nice thing about this is about this size, a little bit longer. I like the comfort grip, but I can come in here, and this is where I can do one of two things. Oopsie. I can do one of two things. I can grab it, oopsie, or cut it. And now I'm just cutting it. Yeah, it never works out. See how I'm go. pulling that like that? You've got to be gentle because these ends haven't been blunted. They're rather sharp. So you can flush cut with these as well. I mean, I could take a piece of wire right here and flush cut it. See? So you can flush cut with it or you can pull with it. And there's a lot of times I'm going to try doing this one. And I can pull this crown out. But i got to pull them. See that? I can pull a crown staple out. So, thank you for that. I'll put this back. Thank you. Those, uh... <laughs> I'm really good at this. Really good at this. I think I found my new calling. Man, I think we're doing pretty good. I just met him yeah. this morning. Okay, good. <laughs> so those are the nippers. All right. Let's do this one. They're wire cutters but they're flush, they're, um, all of these, you'll see it says here made in Germany. These are all case hardened 
really well made, but you'll see here 1,000 volt. These are rated for 1,000 volt. Now I'm gonna tell you this, don't go and test them. <laughs> okay, just take our word for it. Of course they're red, they're rated for 1,000 volt. I have friends who are electricians and I'm always saying you want me to turn off the power. Oh my God, my, a lot of my friends just say, no, I work live because it's not really a lot of power. I always tell people, turn off the power, but these are diagonal cutters, cutting wire. Uh, you can actually cut um, nails with them. They're wonderful and they have the rating. Okay, this one I see in every electrician's pouch. It is a needle nose that is cranked. Okay, it's got the diagonal cutters on it. It's got an area to do the nuts and bolts. And it's got a little uh, course in here for more. But where it is, and I, I'm gonna, I know you're all gonna shake your heads and go, yeah, you ever open up an electrical box, an outlet? And it is, it's in line with a bunch of others. And that must be a boatload of wires in there, right? These allow you to get in there because they're cranked. It's a crank nose. And you, I can't tell you how many times I've used these. I turn off the power if I'm working on an electrical yeah. box for sure. Me both. But boy, I love cranked uh, nose, needle nose. And they're rated for 1,000 watts. I still am always going to turn off the power. Okay? How many, uh, at home, how many sets of uh, wire strippers do you have? Two. And they're the exact same thing because I thought I lost it once, so I bought another. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club, brother. It's probably Leo that took it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, so I've always looked at these. I have some that I just put in, it has all the different gauges. I go like that and it strips the wire. I have about five or six other wire strippers, whether I got them in a garage sale or hand-me-downs. Okay, and they're all the typical ones, you know. I've always wondered about these. So come on over here, Chris, come over here. Uh, this is something that once you set up is good to go. So if you get a lot of gauge wire like this, you just set it like this and it pulls right off. See that? Look, there it is. You can adjust it for different gauge wires. I have some Romax over here. Let's see if this is gonna pull. See that? So it's rated for that gauge wire. Say I have a thinner wire. Let's see if this is gonna work. I don't wanna cut it, I just wanna strip it. And it strips perfectly. And you know what I would do there, right? You see that? These are speaker wires. Give me a second, I'll show you. That's why I always have lineman pliers with me. And you see the flats on a lineman? I just love this. This is how I twist them and get a good twist on them. Really nice, and it kind of flattens it out. So when I'm putting them in the speaker or back in the receiver. Oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm dating myself. Yeah. <laughs> are are there still that? receivers anymore? Oh yeah. There are? Oh yeah, audiophiles still use receivers. Okay, hey, I'm an audiophile. Your speakers use wires? Oh, whatever. <laughs> this is 2022. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so those are the strippers, and they're wonderful. I. I, I don't know what to say about them. You get your adjustments right here. I'll come over here so you can get this big D. Um, you see how I have it bottomed out here? I release it here and I can go thinner wire or a higher gauge or I can open it up for a larger gauge. And what I'll do is I'll just take this knurled nut and bring it right down and that holds its accuracy. They're wonderful. Spring loaded, very comfortable in the hand. Okay, so. This is one I gotta be careful with. Because if you open up uh, one of my chests at home, my mechanical area, I think I have about, I just gave away a bunch of these. Uh, I have several forms of these. These are, I hate calling them this, but the original ones were called what? Channel locks. Okay, because that's the company. All right. Um, what did Rick call these? Oh, because uh, it's funny, I see when they come from Germany, they call them water pump pliers. Okay, but you see the slip joint here? Um, my channel, oh, my other brands have many. That's terrible, <laughs> isn't it? But I'm an old dude. That's what I used to call Are them. You? Yeah, stop it. I, oh. I just turned 32. But I figured. Okay, cool. So the adjustment is this easy. Big D, make sure you get in here. By the way, this is all milled flat here and precisely flat on either side. So I want you all to think, watch the Fest Tool Live right now, where do you use these? Anytime I'm doing plumbing, 
my channel locks go in my pouch. Okay, because that's where I use it the majority of the time. I, how many times have you been working on a um, toilet or underneath the sink and you're trying to adjust these things and you're going back and forth? I big D's nodding because I've done it a thousand times, right? Look how effortless, effortless, effortless this is. And that's my adjustment. They are so cool. Now, what's really smoking about these is this is a huge difference. It's a box joint design. So when I apply torque on this, it is right in the center of the jaws. I don't know if you've ever used a set like this, but I'm gonna open this up all the way. And what's nice about it, and let's see if this works on this extrusion. I'm gonna adjust it. Chris, you're in there with me? Yep. Okay, watch. See how I have it like that? It's now one-handed. I can maximize my torque, say you're working on the pipe or something like that, up under the sink or whatever. As soon as I adjust it and it bites on there, that's because of the box joint design. Cool? So there you go, and that's why I love these. The other thing too is when it's opened up to the max, sometimes I get fat fingers, but there's less tendency to pinch your fingers in there. I don't know if that's a call out, but I really like that when I opened it up. It's got the lanyard system on there, and I was messing with this. I've been messing with these all week. I absolutely love them. Everything in this sustainer, it's in a sustainer, Man, it's in a nice blue sustainer, but it's a sustainer 112. It's basically the old size. The 112 is the size of the old sustainer one uh, T lock. Works in the uh, sustainer uh, of sustainer systems of North America van because it has the different sides. And, and now you have a whole toolbox and just a few sustainers. Look at that, man. I can't see. This is hard to <laughs> from the we're other gonna, side. We're going to work on this guy. Yeah. We're going to work on him. So one of the things that I do want to call it is exactly what the ambassador said. <laughs> Man, you're never going to let that one go. I can't. <laughs> it's just so cool having you here all the time. Uh, think, I want you all to think at home about this. Look, we came out with these, whether you have one, okay? So let's just say you have one. And then that's your, that's your screwdrivers and your wrenches and your adjustable wrenches and your hexes, right? Think about all the applications for that. Then we came out with the quarter and half inch systems of sockets and metric and imperial. You don't have two sets there. Look, it's all in a sustainer. Okay, and look at this. Now we have the pliers. We listened to you. We listened to you, you wanted the lever clamps separately. <laughs> and now you have uh, what Jason said. You have all your mechanics tools, whether it's in your trailer, whether it's in um, your shop, whether it's in your van down by the river. Okay, <laughs> so wherever you have your shop. <laughs> You gotta have stick, brother. Oh wow! <laughs> you gotta, it's gonna be a long two months. Hey, yeah. <laughs> try the veal. We're here all month. Okay, so I think that covered it. Okay, so hey, look at the time. <laughs> you went over. I went over. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. So sometimes I look at things that we have in our arsenal, and we're coming out, and I hate it when someone says, yeah, okay, whatever. No, it's not whatever. Look at this. We have a whole tool chest in there. And I get a kick out of it when I knew we were coming out with the lever clamps separately. But your first question was one of the lever, hey, can I get those lever clamps? So I always tell people, be patient with us. We're working on it. So somebody asked me recently, hey, are you, how long are you going to be doing Festival Live? I said, the rest of my life, because you should see what's coming online. And... I was looking uh, this week when I got back of all the wonderful things coming out next year. A lot of Festool Lives, and I mean a lot of them. Big D's nodding. I know you know now. Mm -hmm. A lot of our Festool Lives are going to be about new products. So I'm really stoked. Um, I'm really excited to be home. Uh, I just, I missed everybody. All right. Except me. Except the ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> you started before. I got home while you were gone. I'll yeah. tell you, it was much quieter around here. Hey now, <laughs> hey now. Hey Minnie, is that true? Yes. 
Three, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Three, three days of peace and quiet. The silence was deafening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I guess that's a good thing. OK, hey! <laughs> My favorite part is here we go. I'm going to call out these names. We got Mark from Crimpen and the Lack Netherlands. We got Spatrician, that's you, Willie. We got Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. We got Ed from Elk Woodworking. Jeff from Clarksburg, Maryland. Chris from Newfoundland, Canada. Nims from France. Or is it Nims, France? I don't know. Ricard from Gotland. Joe from Akron, Ohio. Jason from Puyallup, Washington. Good, hey. Good, hey. good name, good name. Yes, sir. Dave from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Mike from Hotville Hardware. We'll see you next week. Randy from Roscoe, Illinois. Yizu. Hey, Jason, say that one. I have no idea. I have to look it up. Paramaribo. Paramaribo. Suriname. Suriname. How did I know those? <laughs> that's, that's you know I, it was, man. That's where I had my summer home. Oh, we have Jay. <laughs> Jay from Lowell, Mass. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas from Henrico, Virginia. Kenneth from Oak Park, Illinois. Henrik and Zola from Sweden. We have Steve from Devon, Devon. Dan from Whitestone, New York. Mike from Winchester, Virginia. Or Michael. Andy from Delhat, Texas. Roll. Well, Vega, how are you, Roll? We have Ajan and Yusuf from Kuwait. Oh. Woo! I love Kuwait. I want to do a festival live from Kuwait. Mike <laughs> from Remsen, one. Iowa. Eric from Sendoa, Mexico. Sean from Knoxville, Tennessee. Martin from New Quay, Cornwall. John from Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Petrie from Yolarvi, Sweden, uh, Finland. Tom from Moorhead City, North Carolina. Roby from Corner, Texas. Gail from Eden, New York. Tom from Croatia. Al from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Minnie, did I call out Sparky and Peyton? Uh, kind of early on, yes. Okay, I did call out Sparky and Peyton, right? Yes. I just want to make sure everybody knows they're in the house. Because yeah. you were napping, they were napping. Oh, right. they were napping? And I was work Ohio. Okay, we'll get, we'll get the drift over here. Brian from Newcastle. Man, that's a bad one. Minnie's like crying back there. Eric from Poland. <laughs> Oh my God, Bravi Kitchens, you're up in British Columbia, man. We, Eris from Dublin, Ireland, how are you? What a great place. Oh, I love Ireland. David from Israel, Robert from PA, Nick from West Bend, Michigan. What did you feed him, Minnie? Huh. Francis, Francis from Boucherville, Quebec. Hard to name, <laughs> hard, to, hard name. to name, hard to name from Atlanta, Georgia. Bjorg from Stockholm, Sweden. Dan from Kingman, Arizona. Warren from Batavia. Monty from Canton, Connecticut. <coughs> we have Betty's Bay, South Africa. Hey, Luke from Shooty Lumber. How are you, Luke? Peter from Powhatan, Virginia. Russ, how are you, Russ? From Chickchester, England. What a good dude, man. Hey, Renee from Denmark. Michael from Queens Creek, Arizona. It's Queen. Queen Creek. Creek. Oh. You're I'm, an, I'm an Arizona boy. You're originally from Arizona? Yeah. You're a desert rat? I am. Oh, wow. Wicked cool. Tempe, Arizona. Tempe. Hey! Tempe. We have Jason from Tempe, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> we have Roman from Mexico. Sean from Shawsville, Virginia. Matt. I think you know Matt from Tinley Park, Illinois. Gary Jenkins! How are you, Gary? Illinois, oh, I'm sorry, Illinois. And we have Dan from Willis, Dan, Dana Willis from Yakult, Washington. We all know Dana because Dana was part of the uh, win uh, free uh, training. Okay, hey, is that it? Wow. I, th I think I'm getting him too much coffee. <sighs> Who did? Michael or Michelle? Michelle from Paris, France. Oh my God, this is. Uh, just south of Tempe, Arizona is where Paul's from, Chandler, Arizona. Chandler. Chandler. My family lives in Chandler. In Chandler. Mm -hmm. Wow. We have Jason yeah. from Chandler, Arizona. We can just go down a list. I mean, I've been all kinds oh of Oh, my God. Hey, everybody. Just want to say thank you. What do I always say? We love you. Thank you for tuning in. I want to thank Big D, Chris, Minnie, 
Peyton, Sparky. And that's about it. And <laughs> our new ambassador. Yeah, please hey. pray for me over the next two months. Hey, please. thank you so much for your service, sir. Thank you, sir. And happy Veterans Day to everybody out there. Yes. We truly, hey, Sedge is getting serious. <laughs> we truly appreciate all your help. Hey, Rick, happy Veterans Day. Um, we have a lot of veterans here at Festool. And uh, we truly appreciate what you've done all these years and served their country. So in saying that, I want to say thank you. We love you. We'll see you next week from Hotville, Ohio. Everybody, you better be there or be square because we are super stoked. This is the second year in a row. And that is a wrap.